Welcome back to Humankind. Today I'm going to take you through seven additional tips that I think will really benefit advancing and intermediate players in Humankind to really make the most of their game. We're going to cover everything on screen at the moment, everything from city caps, forests, siege units, maxing out your armies, and loads more. Without any further ado, let's jump straight in. And first, a little bonus tip, if you want to pan around the world like this, you can simply press Shift F10 to hide the overview. Anyway, let's jump into the first actual tip, and that is city caps. So if you come up here to the top right of the screen, you can see at the minute my city cap is six. And you can see all the different technologies and so on and so forth that are adding to it. Now, what does city cap actually do? Well, if you go over it, you will start to lose influence. The idea being you don't have enough power or political influence to govern your cities. But there's a really interesting thing with the city cap, which basically means you can almost always, except for the very beginning of the game, afford to be one over your city cap at all times. Why would you want to do that? Well, in case you don't know, city centers themselves are highly powerful tiles, right? Have a look here. 140 influence and a whole load of other things coming out of Harappa. They're much stronger than the outposts that they replace. And if you're not going for one big mega whomping city playthrough, you really are best to ride that city cap high. I suggest plus one. Why? Well, take a look here. I actually have an outpost prepared already to turn into a city. So at the moment, I'm six out of six. And if I convert this outpost into a city, you'll see I've gone to seven out of six. But actually, it is only costing me minus 10 influence to be there. Now, in the early game where influence is crucial and you need to, to expand, you might not want to do this. But at this point in the game, later in the game, where you'll probably be drowning in influence, it really, really doesn't make sense to be lower than plus one above it because the minus 10 penalty is absolutely nothing. Watch what happens though if I say take this one and now I bring myself two cities over the cap, you can see that now the penalty is minus 120. And indeed if you go three over the cap it will be even more extreme also potentially messing with the wider stability of your empire. So it does pay to stick within one, certainly no more than two cities over your cap, but it will depend on your influence generation, of course. So don't be afraid to push the limit on city caps. If you want to increase your cap in general, you'll be able to do that through technologies like philosophy, theology, and supply lines. My next tip is actually a two for one, and it's about forests. But don't click away and tell me about how you don't think climate change is real. Hear me out. So when you go into an outpost, you'll know that there are lots of different things that you can do with influence, right? Generally, you can build resource extractors, harbors, and so on and so forth. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. But I want to tell you about two key interactions with forests. The first one is planting forests. In particular, it's very powerful on outposts because you can do it with influence. So you don't need to waste production and you're probably, as I've said already, drowning in influence by the later stages in the game. So if I head down to the bottom here and turn on resource yields, you can see that overall this uh, outpost in particular is not that productive, right? I have a lot of tiles that don't have any production on them at all. Now, while it's still an outpost, if you click on forest, you can actually plant forests to reduce pollution. That's what the game tells you anyway. But I argue there's something more important for these forests. Watch what happens, let's take this tile. If I plant the forest, all of a sudden, it's a two production tile. Likewise, I can continue to do it around the map, changing these tiles, sometimes removing all of the food, but sometimes leaving some food behind. Overall though, you can see that I'm increasing the yields dramatically, right? That one just gained an additional production, there's another production, here's another production. <laughs> so if you're interested in improving individual tile yields within your empire and reducing pollution at the same time, you can simply plant forests in your territory before converting it to a city or attaching it to an additional territory and you'll be able to basically add one production to every tile essentially. It's a really great way to use forests, and I feel like people aren't really taking enough advantage of the forest, considering just how cheap they are to plant, and you get the added benefit of not losing the game to pollution, or at least delaying the effects of pollution, if that's something you're struggling with. I think also it's more important to be using these forests to build production, because the developers are going to be changing the pollution mechanic down the line, so you may as well make the most of these hidden gems while you've got them. 
The forest tip is actually a two for one though, as I've said. The other side of this tip is that you can chop forests down to add production. Just as you can plant them to add production to the tiles, you can chop them down. So watch what happens here. I'm going to send my units onto this tile. I'm going to click the third function here, clear forest, and you can see clear forest on a valid tile. An industry boost is granted when used on a territory belonging to one of your cities or if you are besieging an opponent's city. So there's actually a two-pronged benefit here. Firstly, you can chop down forests within your territory to send production to the nearest city. Uh, that's useful if you're trying to speed up the production of districts and so on and so forth. The second thing though, of course, is that extra ability. If we are besieging a city, it can increase the generation of our siege units or our siege works. Uh, that's pretty helpful if you're in a hurry, so it might not hurt if you've got some units free that aren't actively besieging the city itself to be chopping down some forests in and around to use those supplies, decrease the time it will take for you to besiege the city. As a little bonus tip here in the video, I just thought I would remind you again that you should always, always, always be spending your influence on your outposts before you turn them into cities to buy these improvements. 21 influence for that copper, and it's a 7 science to production tile. My next tip actually relates to cities again, and this one's a quality of life improvement that those who already know about it may have been screaming at their screens before when I was planting forests one at a time. If you select a district, let's say these are fairly productive lands, let's say I want to build some maker's quarters because of course industry is fantastic in this game. If you hold down shift, you can continue to click and place the same district. This is a huge quality of life improvement, particularly if you know you're going to be focusing a territory like this one here on production. My next tip relates to siege units. They're actually a lot more useful than you might think when you're at war with an enemy or a common foe. Let me show you why. This is very cool. Siege units in Humankind work differently to previous games. Uh, in Humankind you can use them just like this, so once I declare war with them, I can post my siege artillery actually a really long way away and strike and, dis and damage uh, districts and buildings. So you can see here, the main plaza, the maker's quarter, and the research quarter is gonna take about a third damage from this artillery strike. So you don't just have to shoot units with them, you can also destroy their infrastructure. Now why does that matter? Well they might be hiding behind walls, and forts, or garrisons. But even if they're not, and even if you don't plan on taking the city itself, you can use it to strike their infrastructure and destroy it. So if you find an area like this, which has a whole load of research quarters, and as you can see here, if I shot this with, say, four siege artilleries, I would actually destroy them, and that would really tank their science. So don't, don't overlook the power of these kind of strikes that aren't just exclusive to artillery units either. Some of the later game are other type of military units, like air units can do the same thing. So yeah, something to bear in mind, and I think a really, really important tip, not only to crush your opponent's military units, but also their infrastructure, and therefore the, their yields and the success of their entire empire. This next tip will hopefully save you both time and, crucially, money. When you have lots of armies spread around the map, particularly, say, even in peaceful times, if you're doing what I'm doing here and deforesting this land which I've just forested, your army upkeep will be quite significant. Here you can see I'm earning around 800 money per turn, and I'm paying around 320 just to keep my army. Army upkeep is actually a fairly high cost in humankind, probably your most significant piece of expenditure in the game, even if you're not pursuing a military victory necessarily. One thing that you need to note is that your armies will have an overall army size, right? So you can see this regiment here has three units and I can have a maximum of eight. You can increase this size, firstly, if you open up the technology tree and simply search for army. You'll see all of the texts that have army improvements. You can see defenses, hospital, hierarchy, and logistics. If I click any of these, it will take me to the technology, and then I'll be able to hover over it and look for this plus one. You can see plus one unit slot available for each army. Now why does it matter? Well, it's a two-pronged approach, really. Firstly, it will save you time. It'll be less movement, less clicking. You'll be able to keep your armies together, keep your troops in one place, and it'll make it much easier to manage. This matters in particular on large scale maps or when you're fighting a common foe, providing you don't need to split your armies up too much for flanking bonuses, so on and so forth. But what I want you to pay attention to here is the cost. So at the moment my armies are costing me 321 gold upkeep. Now, 
At the moment, you can see I have here, alone, four different groups of my soldiers. What I would like to do is combine them as much as I can, and I know that I have, at the moment, an eight unit cap. So, let me combine this one in with these guys, that makes a lot of sense. And then maybe these three in here. Now this one is at seven out of eight, this one's at three out of eight, not quite full enough, but I can work on that later. Let's now have a look at how much my army is costing, and you can see it's only costing me now 277 money. Indeed, you will pay less army upkeep if you keep your troops together in the same army rather than separating them and letting them run wild. Now as I say, there are some times where you might want to do that if you're exploring the map, if you want to flank the enemy. It's definitely worth pursuing, but overall, particularly in times of peace, it really pays to keep your units together to save you money, and that will add up over the long run. My last tip for this video, and I really hope you've learned something as you've followed through today. If you have, please let me know in the comments below, it's really useful to hear. And if you have any other tips that I haven't covered yet, I would love to hear those as well. Anyway, let's jump into a city and I'll show you what I've got. So in this last tip, hopefully again you'll see some improvements here to help streamline your gameplay and maybe even make some better decisions. Here in a city menu, you can see the constructions list, right? You can see here I've got a whole load of units selected, for example. By default, though, you'll be on this All tab. You'll have to scroll through districts, through infrastructure, down to units, and finally public ceremonies. But don't forget, you can filter using these tabs just for districts, just for infrastructure, just for units, and of course, ceremonies. But the fun doesn't stop there, ladies and gents. You can also shift these dials. Firstly, you can swap from item to list to get a more condensed view of everything. So if you're, if you're quite familiar with the game, you're going through, you know exactly what you're doing, then you can shrink it down and really see everything on one screen. Very helpful. The other thing you can do is swap from queue to buyout, which will let you buy out with either gold or population, should you not have the action prohibited. Now, this is really useful as well because it means basically you don't need to do what I tend to do by default without thinking, which is, okay, I've got money I want to spend, what do I want to spend it on? Queue up a few things, and then I head up here and start buying them. The easier way to do it, if I just remove all of this stuff from the queue, the easier way to do it is just to simply swap to buy out and then just start clicking things, right? Literally just start buying them. No need to queue them up. Very, very useful, and hopefully it'll help you streamline your gameplay a little bit. Again, saving you time so you can spend more time doing the things you enjoy in Humankind and less time staring at menus. Unless, of course, you enjoy staring at menus, in which case maybe ignore that tip. I don't know, up to you. Either way, if I shift F10 here to end the video, we can get a nice pan over this beautiful world. I do suggest you take advantage of that. Also, a little bonus tip at the end here, Q and E will allow you to rotate the map as well. We don't have full rotation and it won't stay there, which is kind of annoying. Hopefully we'll see some improvements to that in future. But if you're after those sweet, sweet screenshots and you wanna say, zoom down here and get a nice shot of this beautiful city, look at that. You can pan around and enjoy humankind in all of its beauty. Thank you very much for watching everybody. And until next time, I'll see you then. Take care and bye-bye.